Hello there, I'm a lovely jewelry makers. I'm Christina of CSL Designs, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these cute dragonfly links. And you can use them in many different ways, whether that's for earrings, a pendant, or even make a length of chain for a bracelet or necklace. And they're also pretty quick and easy to make. So if you want to learn how, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. Now I'm using a regular round silver coated copper wire and the first gauge here is a 1mm and then I'm also using a 0.8mm. Now either of these wires can be changed out for other gauges depending how large you want your link to be. And then of course we need our beads. Now I've got two different sizes here. The first one is an 8mm, that's the large one, and then I've got a 6mm for the small one. And the specific ones that I'm using are blue coated hematite gemstone rounds but you can use whatever you want to. Just make sure the holes are large enough to take the wire. And then we need a couple of different tools. So first of all I've my flush cutters to cut our wire, tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire, round nose pliers so we can make a tiny little loop, and then I'm also using my six-step bail making pliers to make some loops as well, but you can easily use the round nose pliers in place of them if you don't have them. And finally, I'm just using a ruler to help make it as symmetrical as possible. So there will be a material list and useful links in the description box down below, otherwise let's get all our tools and materials ready. And let's get started. So then the length of wires that we'll need is first of all a length of a 0.8mm of about 25 centimeters, and this is going to be used to make the wings with. And then I have a short length of the 1mm of about 10 centimeters or so, and this is going to create the link itself. So I'm just going to grab my round nose pliers first of all because I want to make the tiny loop to begin with and my length of 0.8mm we're going to use to make the wings. You just want to place the pliers roughly in the middle of the wire here so we have somewhat even lengths on both sides and then just bring one side all the way around and create a full circle and have the length come back out in the direction that it was coming before and we've just added in a circle there and this is basically just a loop so we can add it on to the 1mm length. So just make sure the one mil will go through this. Then I want to get my ruler in because I just want to make sure I make these wings as even as possible. So what I'm going to do is in this case I'm just going to use one centimeter length to measure and I'm going to measure from the loop in the middle there. So I'm just placing my ruler and then just also grabbing my tweezer nose pliers so I can grab onto the wire in the right place, place the one centimeter mark by the loop and then where it hits zero I want to grab onto the wire with my pliers and then I know this is where I need to make the bend so I'm going to bend the excess wire on the other side here of the pliers upwards at an angle. Now I'm not going to do a 90 degree angle we just want a slight angle to it and then basically we want to do the same with the other side so just bring the ruler back and then from the loop but on the other side do the same thing measure from the zero mark and then on the one centimeter mark I want to grab onto the other length with my pliers and again then bend this length upwards as well in the same direction at a slight angle so we have a wire going upwards there in the same direction on both sides but just at slight angles and then this is a starting point for our wings now for the next step I'm still going to use the ruler because I'm then going to measure about five millimeter from the bend that we made so place the bend at the five millimeter mark and then place the pliers at the zero and then bend this wire towards the other side and I'm just going to make sure it goes behind and it looks something like that and then before I bend it any further I like to then actually bring it down so it kind of creates a curve rather than a straight line with the wire and I'm going to bring it down next to the loop on the same side where it's coming from. Repeat on the other side. So from the bend place that on zero and then place your pliers on that wire at the 5mm mark and then bend this one also towards the opposite side and before I go any further I'm going to bring it downwards so we get the curve in place instead of a straight wire and again down behind and then also on the same side of the loop as where this wire is coming from and there we have the two first wings in place and obviously if you want to do any adjustment I suggest doing it now before we move on and just make sure they're as symmetrical as possible. Now I'm just going to flip it to the back because I just want to get these wires in position so I want to add a curve into them but kind of coming back upwards instead of downwards like this because now we're going to make the bottom wing and again I like to do both sides kind of right after each other here so we get them symmetrical as we go so just get them into a position roughly like this then I'm going to grab my pliers again and in this case you can use your ruler to measure again but what I'm going to do is use the wings that we already made as kind of a reference so I'm going to use that very first bend and just basically place my pliers below that and then use that to know where I'm going to bend this wire and then bend it towards the other lengths and the same with the other one. Just use the bend on the wing above it and then bend this wire back on itself because then we kind of create these smaller bottom wings. Again I want to make sure I 
kind of have curves in my wire rather than having straight wire because that will make it a little bit more natural looking. And then just maneuver these in place where they're crossing over each other again on the back. So we now have our wings ready. So what I'm going to do is grab my length of one mil and I want to feed this through the very first loop that we made and all the other wires are still at the back. So basically this wire is going through the loop but in front of all the other crossed over wires and then just bring it all the way through. And then I also want to bring in my beads. So on the bottom, I'm gonna add the large one which is gonna be the body and just push it up there. And on the top, I'm gonna add the small one. Now you don't have to add the small one just yet. I just like to kind of have it there as I'm doing the next step. To to help make sure everything's going to sit in place properly. Then what I'm going to do is we need to bring these two wires that we still have open around towards the front. So this is where I like to, it can be a little bit fiddly, but I like to push these two beads close together and kind of squish the wires a bit. And as I'm doing that, I then take my first wire here, bring it between the top wing and the small bead, and then towards the front, then cross over at the front where all the wires are, and then come down on the other side of the large bead, and then go be behind the wire like that and then basically it's curving around the body and then I'm just gonna wrap this around a full time like that. Before I cut anything off I like to just bring the other wire around as well. So same principle I'm gonna kind of squish all the wires together using the beads make sure everything stays in place and then bring this wire between the top wing and the small bead on this side. Same thing go over the front now crossing over the other wire that we brought over and then down the other side of the body behind the one mil wire again. Now you can remove the small bead now because it probably will just fall off because we haven't fastened it yet. But what I then like to just do is cut off the excess of the first wire that we wrapped around there. So we've done a full wrap around the one mil length and then we just want to tighten that so it grips around that one mil wire nicely. And then I can go in with the other length and do the same thing. So do a wrap with that as well. Just a full wrap all the way around and then go in and cut off the excess and then tighten the wrap and then we have basically the wings attached to the body now and obviously it looks a little bit weird without the head so we can attach that now and then what we basically need to do now is finish off the one mil wire so on the bottom here I'm just going to do a simple loop so I'm going to place my pliers just below these wraps that I did and bring the wire straight forward like that then I'm going to take my six of bell making pliers use a smaller step you can use around those pliers I just like to use these when I want consistent loops and then bring Bring it all the way around the pliers and obviously the head might be a little bit in the way just remove it if you need to and bring it around so we have a full circle there then I can go in and cut off the excess with that one too and then you can see it's sticking out a little bit like a jump ring if you open it. So we can just close that up and there we have a loop. Now you can make a wrap loop if you prefer, but making a loop like this, you can open and close it if you need to attach it to something else. And then we just need to do the other end, add the head, take your tweezer nose pliers. In this case here, I'm going to bend this wire sideways and I'm just making sure I leave a little space between the bead and the bend, just a couple of millimeters or so. And then take that same step on the six step bell making pliers and bring it all all the way around to create a full circle like that and in this case I am going to make a wrap loop so the bottom is an open loop and the top is a wrap loop that way it's also easy to attach it to other things but then we just want to grab onto the circle with pliers and then take the remaining of the one mil length here and just wrap it around the space on the wire that we left below the loop until you reach the head and you can't wrap any further and if you make sure to get it nice and tight that's going to also stop it from moving too much and then bring it all the way to the the back so I can cut off the excess and then just make sure to squeeze in that end so it's not sticking out. And then we finished off the top and the bottom. Now all that I just want to do is basically have a look at the wings. They might be a little bit messed up so you can just separate them out more. I like to kind of push the top ones up a bit and the bottom ones down a bit and also make the two sides as symmetrical as possible. So you just do that until you're happy with how the wings are and then you have your finished link. And you can then of course attach them together however you want to. So you can just open up the loop on the bottom, bring in another 
link that you made and also make them in different sizes. So here you can see I made a smaller one. So for instance, that would be really cute to put on the bottom, close up the loop again, and then that is dangling below the larger one. And these will be cute earrings. And then on the bottom one, you can add just a dangle with a bead so it matches nicely. Or if you don't want to have a loop on the bottom, what you could do is use a head pin. That way the bottom will just be flat or a ball. And then you just have a loop at the top if you want the link just by itself. Now the small link here I made in exactly the same way as the larger one. I just used slightly different materials. So instead of an 8mm and 6mm bead, I used a 6mm for the body and then a 4mm for the head. And instead of the 0.8mm wire for the wings, I used a 0.6mm and then I used the 0.8mm to go through the whole body and make the link. And of course I also made the wings smaller so I work with shorter measurements. So that's how you make this cute dragonfly link. And of course you can use them however you want to, whether you want to make earrings, a pendant, or even a full chain with them. So if you're interested in any of my jewelry, I do have a shop where I sell it. It's csldesignsshop.com. And I also sell other things like tutorials and kits. And of course, I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below so you can go straight there. And while you're there, you can also sign up to my newsletter so you don't miss out on any future updates. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.